well students welcome to the class you are on board and hopefully you are quite motivated because without motivation we can't achieve anything in life so welcome again and i assure you although it is a technical course you will have so many legal provisions interpretations of the legal provisions a hard work throughout the semester but let me assure you that with regularity punctuality and hard work it will all become very easy for you but one thing that i always tell my students and let me tell you in the very first class that application of mind is very important we can read we can study we can go on studying but it is the application of mind on the relevant subjects that makes the difference so you will have to apply yourself and this course will become very easy for you in the days to come so what we have to study in this course most of the course that would comprise on income tax laws and application of those laws management by different stakeholders individuals businesses companies everybody is affected by tax then i shall give you in depth overview of sales tax laws and also we shall study the capital value tax so what i have to tell you and what i suppose you already know that everybody knows what taxes are the man in the street the common man everybody is affected by taxes and talking about taxes mehangai bahut ho gayi taxes bahut lag gaye टैक्सेज ने हमारी कमर तोड़ दी गवर्नमेंट हम पर टैक्स लगाए जा रही ये सब बातें आप सुनते हैं इसके लिए कोई आपको एक्सपर्ट होना जरूरी नहीं बिकॉज दीज आर दंस हु आर सेंग दिस दे आर अफेक्टेड बाई दीज टैक्स सो वाट इज न्यू माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स वाट इज डिफरेंट वाट इज यूनिक वाट शुड बी योर परसेप्शन अबाउट टैक्सेस यू हैव taken admission in mba classes you are the future of this nation you will be in diversified fields as business manager as professional as advisors or running your own business you will be need in technical knowledge in expert knowledge and you will have to think how the experts think about taxes so that is the difference let me assure you that throughout the course it will be my effort to make you as comfortable as possible this is a very easy subject you know a lot about it but still you have to learn a lot about it it is around you but the technicalities and legal aspects in the provisions and interpretations all that would have to be learned and i am over here to teach you to guide you to facilitate you you will have no problem whatsoever in the days to come provided as i have told you you need to be regular punctual hard working taking the notes regularly referring to your textbooks and the handouts and everything will be very easy and spontaneous for you one thing more let me tell you and every one of us you need to discover yourself every one of us has to discover himself and you must be knowing it and i may add that you have lot of potential human beings have lot of potential what is needed that is only that this potential is required to be explored and then apply it this is the time 
that you explore your potential and apply in the days to come. One thing more, there are no shortcuts to success. Success is in waiting for you, provided you apply yourself, you work hard. If you think that there are some shortcuts to success, no. If you will be working hard, you will be following your mission whatsoever it is in life. Now, of course, students, your mission is the study. So if you are regular and follow it regularly in a way as has been prescribed, the syllabus has been designed in a very articulate manner and we shall look into it one by one, how it has been designed. I can assure you that success will be following you in the days to come. And very bright careers are in waiting for you, provided all that has been said that is done by you. Inshallah, you will have very bright careers in the days ahead. Now I will have to brief you on the outline, rather the syllabus which has been designed. The syllabus, as I have told you, that comprises three sections. One is about income tax laws, their laws, the applications, understanding, and how that is applied by the different stakeholders. Then a brief overview, that would be not so brief, in-depth overview of sales tax and a brief overview of capital value tax. Now, how this course will be managed, what is your syllabus, what we have to cover in the days to come, in the weeks to come, that we take one by one. Our module one, that will be about an overview of taxation. As I told you, the taxes, as you know, as ordinary persons know, as the man in the street knows, that is one perception. That will be discussed, what are the taxes, how these are viewed by the experts in public finance, by the economists, how they view it, how they say it, how they look upon it, that will be discussed, what taxes are. Then, who can levy taxes? Everybody and anybody cannot levy tax. Whosoever thinks he starts levying tax. So what is the authority? What is the procedure? What is the process whereby the taxes can be levied? Then what are the different objectives of taxation? Why taxes are at all levied? So these objectives, those are controlled by the fiscal policy. That fiscal policy objective will be discussed. Then what are the different sources of revenue generation? From where this revenue which is required for different purposes which we will study, that will be discussed. And then there are some canons. Canons aap ko shayad maloom na ho, pehle kabhi suna na ho. Principles, kya usool hain, kya philosophy hai, jiske basis par taxes lagaye jate hain. So different taxes have been devised to wo usool, wo canons, wo principles, wo discuss kiye jayen. And in the light of these canons and principles, there are different types of taxes. Wo types kya hai? Unko ek ek karke hum dekhenge. Unki kya zarurat hai? Yis types ki ka incidence kya hai? Inka boj kis par padta hai? Yis sab chizen jo hai in detail hum study karein. Aur uske baad, the taxation structure of Pakistan. Pakistan mein kaun kaun se taxes hain? Unka structure kya hai? Unko kaun lagata hai? Unko kaise lagaya jata hai? Ye tamam aspect jo hai, wo hum first module mein dekhenge, which is an overview of taxation. Next comes the basic features of income tax. Main emphasis will be income tax, so we shall start from income tax law. So, that would start from the background. What is the history of the tax laws? When Pakistan came into being, there was no law at all. So, how, from where the law came? We adopted the law which was prevalent in India. Income Tax Act 1922. And from there, the first law on income tax in Pakistan 
that came in the name of Income Tax Ordinance 1979. And at present, we have Income Tax Act 2001. So this is about the income tax law in Pakistan, the background, the history, which is of the income tax. So present ordinance, why it was necessary, why it was introduced, all that will be discussed in the weeks to come. The certain powers have been given to the federal government, to the CBR. CBR is the central board of revenue, the administrative wings on the tax matters of the government. So all that will be discussed in the days to come. Then in the next module, we shall move on to different definitions. So these definitions, in all statutes, in all laws, you can say if you don't understand the statute at this point in time. Law jahan bhi koi law hoga, wo civil law hai, criminal law hai, tax law hai, banking law hai. Koi bhi law, my dear students, jab aap padhenge, تو شروع میں کچھ ڈیفینیشنز دے دی جاتی ہیں ڈیفینیشنز کی کیا ضرورت ہے لاؤ میں ڈیفینیشنز کی اس وجہ سے ضرورت ہے کہ the words which are going to be used those have specific meanings those don't have the ordinary meanings once those words have been defined ان کو ڈیفائن کیا جاتا ہے کہ اس لاؤ میں for the purposes of this law اس ورڈ کی کیا ڈیفینیشن ہوگی کیا انٹرپیٹیشن ہوگی وہ ادر وائز انٹرپریٹ نہیں ہو سکتا تو ڈفرنٹ ورڈز دیے گئے ہیں جن کی ڈیفینیشن ہے دیٹ ول بی ٹیکن ایز ڈیفائنڈ ان دا کمنگ سیکشن سم ورڈس دوز ہیو بین ڈیفائنڈ دوز ول بی ٹیکن ایز سیٹ اینڈ دیر ول بی مینی ورڈس وچ ہیو ناٹ بین ڈیفائنڈ ان انکم ٹیکس آرڈیننس دیر آر اونلی سیونٹی فور کلازز اینڈ ون ہنڈریڈ ورڈس which have been defined. For other words, ordinary dictionary meanings can be taken. But which have been defined, they have specific meanings, technical meanings, the reference and the context in which those have been used, those are to be applied. So there are some words which have been defined. For instance, taxier, person, taxpayer, tax on income. I take only these four words which have been defined so that you may know what is the significance and what are the meanings of the scope of the definition which I was just telling you. You can say tax here. Ye kaun si baat hai jiske liye definitions ki ja rahi? Hume to isko pehle se ilan. Ek simple se do word hai tax or ear. جس ایئر کا ٹیکس ہوگا اس کو ہم ٹیکس ایئر کہیں گے لیکن دیٹ از ناٹ سو سمپل دا ٹیکس ایئر دیٹ مے بی اے پیریڈ آف ٹویلو منتھس دیٹ مے اسٹارٹ فرام فرسٹ جولائی اینڈ مے اینڈ ایٹ تھرٹی اے جون دیٹ مے اسٹارٹ ان اسپیشل کیسز فرام فرسٹ جنوری اینڈ مے اینڈ آن تھرٹی فرسٹ ڈسمبر اینڈ ان سم سرٹن اسپیشل کیسز دیٹ مے بی اے پیریڈ آف ففٹین ڈیز تھرٹی ڈیز اینڈ سکسٹی ڈیز So it needs to be defined what is a tax year, what is a normal tax year, what are the special tax years as have been defined and outlined that will be the tax year for the purposes of income tax. Now person again, you will ask what this study is, for what we have taken admission in taxation management course if we have to be told what a person is. We are very knowledgeable. We already know what a person is. What would the teacher or instructor would tell us? What for this course has been designed? So let me tell you. Your knowledge, that's okay. All of us, those who don't study tax laws, they have some concept about person. And that is very correct in that context in which they know. They are not wrong when they have certain concept about the person. But when you will be studying tax laws, you have to apply those tax laws. Who is the person? Person can be an individual. And can you imagine? The person can be the provincial government. The person may be the federal government. The person can be a trust. The person can be a company. So all natural or artificial persons, 
these are persons in the eyes of law. We shall study in detail the person, this is not all. It has been defined in section 80 and also in section 2 as I am telling you. So, these definitions are very much necessary. Then comes the word taxpayer. Again, the one who pays tax, that is taxpayer, in ordinary sense of the word. But why the taxpayer has been defined? What is the need of that? My dear students, आप को शायद सुनकर ये हैरानी हो, लेकिन इसमें हैरानी की कोई बात नहीं। जब आपको उसका rational, logic और वजह पता चले, तो you will appreciate why these words have been defined. अब tax payer यहाँ पर सिर्फ वो शख्स नहीं है, जो tax pay कर रहा है। He is not the only person who is liable to pay tax under law, या जिसकी liability है, tax payer. The taxpayer can be the one whose liability is to collect the tax. May I give you an example? You are working somewhere. You are an employee, and your employer is paying you the salary. So, can you imagine who is the taxpayer? Yes, tell me, please. You are right. That employee is the taxpayer, but the law says. That it is the responsibility of the employer to deduct the tax at source. जब वो salary pay कर रहा है तो tax जो है उसके amount deduct की जाए salary pay करने से पहले deduction at source. This is the responsibility of the employer. And if he fails to do that, अगर कोई employer ये deduction tax की नहीं करता salary से, he will be treated as taxpayer. And the tax will be recovered from him as is recovered from any taxpayer. All the laws, all the penalties of the defaulter as a taxpayer, the person who has actually to pay, will be on the shoulders of the person who is not deducting the tax. So that's why these definitions are required to be given proper shape and to be explained in the beginning of the uh, statute so that in the coming chapters when these words are used their scope can be known who are the taxpayers that has been defined and elaborated over here the next is the tax on income this is about the income tax when you will be studying the sales tax there, there will be the different concept over there so what is the concept of the tax Tax is on a person in respect of his income. So two things have to be identified. First, the person. Who is the person and whose income is this? If you are the person having some income, deriving some income, earning some income, it cannot be applied on someone else. So the person and income the, those go side by side, and what is the income, what is the scope of income, that we shall have to see later on. In the next module, as you are seeing on the slide, we shall study the heads of income. These heads of income, my dear students, ye jo income earned ho rahi hai, isko mukhtalif heads mein classify kar diya gaya. This is the classification of income. For instance, salaried person, those are, are the one class. So first head is the salary income. Then there may be some income from property. That has been classified under the head income from property. Then capital gains. And after that the business income. And now these statutes, these are very tricky ones. Now these four heads have been defined. And someone can come forward. That although I have the income. But I am not covered under any of these heads. Why should I be taxed? So the statutes has a way for that. And a fifth head has been designed. And that is called income from other sources. From any other source, if you have the income, you are going to be taxed. So under the head salary, one has to say so many things. What a salary is? Who is to be charged to the salary? 
to whom you will call an employer what is the definition of the employee and what an employment is all these these aspects all these words all these concepts those have been outlined those have been explained so that there not there may not be any confusion in the days to come everybody should be clear what is the concept then the next head as i told you that was income from property so the law states what a property is which property is to be taxed with your knowledge of accounts and finance and all your background you must be knowing there are different types of the property movable property immovable property tangible property intangible property all such types of properties are there so this income from property that only covers the income from immovable property if someone has the rental income from the immovable property that will be covered under the head income from property then certain rules have been designed that since you are earning an income for earning that income you must be incurring some expenses so what those expenses are to what extent those expenses are allowed to you everything is provided therein and that has been designed in a very systematic way all rules regulations those are known to everybody to the tax payers to the tax collector law applies equally for each and every person then i told you that capital gain we shall study in detail what capital gains are at this point in time i can just tell you capital gain is a gain which arises out of the disposal of a capital asset this requires a lot of knowledge information and that is given in the law itself so the capital gain would arise from the disposal of the capital assets we shall have to study what a capital asset is which are the capital assets and what is the gain how the gain would arise and whether all the gains which are arising those are to be taxed ye sari cheeze jo hain tamam gains jo hain immovable property assets ki disposal se jo arise honge wo taxable nahi hain kahan kahan par taxable nahi hain kahan par taxable hain ye sab cheeze aapko batai jayengi exercises ke zariye aapko samjhaya jayega you will work out everything in a very easy way and you will co- comprehend when you will solve those problem it would be very easy for you you just don't worry that i am telling you so many things on the day one it is necessary to just to give you a preview this preview will only give is given with a view to make you understand what we are going to study so it is not in the one day that we can cover the 45 lecture this is just as a syllabus which we are going to cover and you must know what these words these headings these topics are what they mean and what you have to study and the next i told you the income from business so what is a business that is defined how that income will be taxed what expenses are allowed in business how the different type of records are to be maintained so my students maintenance of records is very much important it is obligatory the tax payers those are obliged under law to maintain the given books of account if though these are not maintained that is an offense under law and the respected persons will be punished accordingly the so next come the income from other sources if there is an income which is not covered under any heads which we have mentioned and as i have already told you is not covered under any of these heads that income will be treated under the head as income from other sources the purpose is that no income should escape tax that should be covered under the tax net and that can be easily taxed because the taxation authorities they cannot tax you under until 
and unless you come under the latter of law so law provides all incomes whether those are under these heads are not under these heads as long as these are incomes those will be taxed now next comes the method of account you all know it's not new for you that there are different methods of accounting you are receiving something which is called on receipt basis or on accrual basis you are maintaining your books of account all that you have read and you know that similarly stocks are maintained on fifo basis or life of basis first in first out or last in first out what i have to tell you that is not new what this income tax ordinance has provided that is international accounting standards are to be followed by all the ones who are maintaining their accounts international accounting standards that is must for all the businesses and all the companies next comes the residential status this is again a very tricky word as far as taxation laws are concerned for ordinary person not tricky for you because you are going to be the experts and professionals in the days to come as far as residential status is concerned when i ask my students in classes it is my experience who is resident the answer is very spontaneous they tell me the resident is one who is the resident of pakistan or the citizen of pakistan or the national of pakistan but that is not the definition in tax laws for instance here let me tell you and you can understand it for tax purposes as far as an individual is concerned because there are different definitions for aops for companies that we shall take when we shall study this topic what is a resident individual a resident individual is one who has one 83 days stays in pakistan during the tax year and all these concepts what is a tax year and a person who is staying in pakistan for 183 days during the tax year he is the resident he may be the national he may not be the national he may be the citizen he may not be the citizen if the stay in pakistan is for 183 days in the tax year the person is resident so these definitions these explanations the knowledge of these terminologies that is very necessary and that's very easy once you will understand it it becomes your normal life to apply these concepts in your studies in your profession that would become is and then what will be the tax incidence why we are interested in knowing the residential status residential status we are interested to know because of one who is the resident that person will be taxed in a different way different rules will apply on that whereas the one who are not resident on them different rules will be applied then comes the salary and its computation i have already told you what the salary is what is employment employee employer all these are explained then there are different rules say the person who is earning up to rupees 600000 during the tax year for them there are different rules and the persons who are earning more than 600000 during a tax year for them there are different rules for computation of tax so all that will be explained to you then there are different facilities which we call perquisites i didn't want to use this word because it may not frighten you these are different benefits which are available to the different persons that would be explained to you as we study all this then pension rules how the pension is to be applied for tax purposes how the provident fund are to be applied the rules have been provided this is only the provident fund contribution by the employer or by the employee how those are to be added into the income for the tax purposes what are the benefits what are the reliefs what are the exemptions available to the salaried person all that will be explained to you and taxable income will be computed and different types of facilities rather benefits allowances tax credits i will tell you what those are those are given 
and tax is computed and returns are submitted. Let me tell you over here, for the salaried person, it is not necessary to file a return of income if a salaried person doesn't have the income from any other source. They can just file a certificate issued by their employer. The next we shall study the computation of the income from property. I have already told you this is the only the rental income on immovable property that is to be taxed, not other income. So that will be worked out what expenses are allowed, what is the treatment of the advanced rent, if any obtained by that landlord, all that will be considered, will be studied in detail and that will be taken care of, computations will be made, taxable income will be worked out and there are different rates according to those rates, tax will be applied. So you need not worry, we will take different examples, different exercises, different problems will be solved and you will see this is all very easy. Then income from business I have already told you that will be considered in detail. Let me tell you that in, in business income it is not only the income, it is the maintenance of records which is more important. Different types of records are to be maintained, different rules are to be followed. For instance, there is a rule that if salaries are being paid to the employees and if the salaries which are rupees 10,000 per month or more, those salaries are to be paid through crossed bank check. Now say, an employer has paid salary worth rupees 10 million during the tax years. That is very legal. There is no underhand game. Who tax salaries pay karni thi employees? Who no ne salary pay kar di? To record mein aap kya show kareng? Aap income expenditure statement mein kya show kareng? Aap mujhe batai. No doubt as you are thinking and you are telling me, I suppose, these are the expenses of the employer. What should I tell you? Agar employer ne ye amount through cross bank check pay nahi ki, to ye expense that will be added to the income of the employer. So that's why I am stressing over and over again to you that knowing these rules, these regulations, that is very important. Jaise ke abhi maine aapko bataya, ये एम्प्लॉयर की रिस्पांसिबिलिटी है कि टैक्स जो है एम्प्लॉई का एट सोर्स डिडक्ट करे तो ये सैलरी जो है ऑल दो इट इज द एक्सपेंस ऑफ द एम्प्लॉयर तो दैट एक्सपेंस विल नॉट बी अलाउड टू द एम्प्लॉयर दैट विल बी एडेड टू द इनकम ऑफ द एम्प्लॉय तो ये बात मैं आपको बता रहा था कि ऑल दो इट इज एन एक्सपेंस इफ द रूल्स आर नॉट फॉलोड दैट एक्सपेंस बिकम्स एन इनकम तो आप समझ सकते हैं कि हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज to understand these rules, these regulations, these statutory provisions, these laws and how these are applied, that would help you in tax management. That is all about the tax management. How will you manage your tax? You are making an expense and that is added as the income. How that business would run, how that business would be maintained. This is the way that you can manage your business, you can manage your tax affairs that you must have the proper knowledge of that. Now, about the capital gains, we have already studied that capital gain is the gain which arises out of the disposal of a capital asset. But there may be certain situations, although there is a disposal of a capital asset, there is a disposal and that of a capital asset, but still, there should be the gain as per definition. There, that gain will not be charged to tax. For instance, if the government acquires some assets, some capital assets have been acquired by the government compulsorily and some amount has been paid in return. That amount has been reinvested by that person during the tax year. Although there is a gain on the disposal of the capital asset, but that gain will not be charged to tax under law. So there are some exemptions under law where, and there are so many exemptions which we will study. Then next, as I have already told you, income from other sources and its computation. 
that is the purpose I have told you that if there is an any income, that is not covered under any of the four heads of income which we have studied, that will be treated or classified under the head, a new head has been created, under the head income from other sources, purpose is that no income should go untaxed. जो income जहाँ से भी आ रही है, अगर वो उन heads में नहीं fall करती, तो उस पर tax से कोई ना बच जाए, tax उस पर लगना चाहिए, ये इसका मकसद. This is what is being done. Now next set of and carry forward of losses. You know these statutes, these laws, when we read of that, we conceive of that, we think these are there as a burden to restrict us. No doubt, laws are there to restrict us. But these laws are very fair and just. You can see it. There is a business. Business is aap earn kar rahe, incomes earn kar rahe. Those incomes are taxed. Aap expenses kar rahe. Aap ko allow kiye ja rahe ho expenses. Still, there may be a situation that you may have a loss. Business may ko zaruri nahi ki aap ko income hi ho. Jab aap ki incomes ho rahe hain, those are charged to tax. Agar kisi wajah se bhi, by any factor, economic or financial or any other factor, you have a loss. Then you see, the law is very just. They are allowing you the loss. In your books of accounts, you can show that loss. And you have studied, my dear students, that there are different heads of income. So, you have seen that there are heads of income. You have seen that income is very अगर एक हेड ऑफ इनकम से आपको इनकम हो रही और दूसरे हेड ऑफ इनकम में आपको लॉस हो रहा है तो ये सेट ऑफ लॉस का मतलब ये है कि वो लॉस आप एडजस्ट कर सकते हैं उस इनकम से आपको ये सहूलत दी जा रही है कि द यू कैन एडजस्ट दैट लॉस आउट ऑफ द इनकम फ्रॉम एनी अदर हेड ऑफ इनकम एंड द बैलेंस अमाउंट विल बी चार्ज टू टैक्स एंड स्टिल यू डोंट हैव more than one head of income. You have only one head of income and there is a loss. What you can do? You can carry forward that loss to the next tax year and you can do that up to six next years. Six next following years that ye loss aap carry forward kar sakte hai. Agar aap ko in years mein ko income hoti hai to that loss will be set off against that. Is par mein stress is wajah se de raha कि आप देखेंगे कि लॉ में जहां सख्ती है वहां पर लॉ इज ऑलवेज जस्ट फॉर एवरीबॉडी एंड एनीबॉडी फॉर द टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट फॉर द टैक्स पेयर यू विल सी द प्रोविजंस द लॉ इज वेरी जस्ट फॉर एवरीबॉडी दोस हु आर पेइंग टैक्स एंड दोस हु आर रिकवरिंग टैक्स फॉर देम सम रूल्स रेगुलेशन हैव बीन प्रेस्क्राइब एंड ऑल दोस हैव टू वर्क अंडर दोस रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन देन सर्टेन अलाउंसेस and tax credits are also allowed. Now, you are in real world. Here, there is a lot of tax that is going on. So, you are going on tax. But you are living world. Here, if you are doing such a work, where you need to get a chance, you need to get a chance, you need to get a chance, that is also available to you. What are these allowances? These are the deductible allowances. What are these allowances? ये अमाउंट जो आप मैं बताने जा रहा हूं आपको कि कहां पर आप खर्च करें व्हेन दिस इज डन दैट कैन बी डिडक्टेड फ्रॉम योर इनक अब ऐसा है से आप जकात देते हैं अब जकात किस तरह देनी है प्रोसीजर है वो एक अलग बात अब आप एक नए काम कर रहे हैं आप सोसाइटी में कंट्रीब्यूट कर रहे हैं आपकी जकात से इकोनॉमी को और सोसाइटीज को और डिफरेंट सेगमेंट्स ऑफ द सोसाइटीज को फायदा पहुंच रहा है तो जो जकात दे रहा है उसको भी कोई बेनिफिट होना चाहिए इन टैक्स मैटर राम से बेनिफिट तो जाहिर है जकात का बेनिफिट तो अल्लाह ताला ने देना है लेकिन टैक्स लॉज में भी जकात का बेनिफिट आपको इस लॉ में दिया जा रहा है अगर आपने जकात पे की है तो अमाउंट ऑफ जकात 
वो आप अपने इनकम से सब्ट्रैक्ट कर देंगे माइनस कर देंगे आपकी टैक्सेबल इनकम उस लिहाज से कम हो जाएगी तो दिस इज एन अलाउंस उसके अलावा और अलाउंसेज हैं वो हम पढ़ेंगे कौन कौन से अलाउंसेज हैं जहां पर ये रियायात आपके लिए दो आर फॉर यू एंड दो आर अवेलेबिलिटी तो इसी तरह कुछ टैक्स क्रेडिट्स अभी बात हो रही थी कि आपको जक़ात में अगर आपने दी तो आपकी इनकम से जक़ात की अमाउंट सब कर दी गई मिनहा कर दी गई यहां पर आपको टैक्स अमाउंट में कुछ सहूलत दी जा रही से आपको डोनेशन देते हैं वेन यू आर गिविंग ए डोनेशन टू ए चैरिटेबल इंस्टीट्यूशन अप्रूव बाई द सी बी आर तो वहां पर आपको टैक्स क्रेडिट अवेलेबल तो हम टैक्स क्रेडिट्स की बात कर रहे थे टैक्स क्रेडिट्स आर अवेलेबल टू दो आर पेइंग एनी थिंग टू दी चैरिटेबल इंस्टीट्यूशन उसके बाद टैक्सेशन ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स की बात आती वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द टैक्सेशन ऑफ द सैलरीड पर्सन नो डाउट दे आर इंडिविजुअल्स बट देर मे बी मैनी इंडिविजुअल हु आर नॉट सैलरीड पर्सन तो हाउ देर इनकम विल बी कैलकुलेटेड ये इसको सेपरेट क्यों किया गया इस वजह से कि सैलरीड पर्सन को कुछ कंसेशन कुछ रियायत हासिल होगी जो दूसरे इंडिविजुअल्स को हो सकता है हासिल ना हो तो दैट इज वाई द इंडिविजुअल है सैलरीड पर्सन दैट इज ए सेपरेट क्लास और राधर दैट इज ए हेड ऑफ इनक नेक्स्ट कम्स दिस टैक्सेशन ऑफ एसोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन विच वी कॉल ए ओ पी ये ए ओ पी मैं कसरत से इस्तेमाल करता रहूंगा ये वर्ड That would mean association of persons. शायद AOP ओ पी आपने ना सुना हो लेकिन आपने पार्टनरशिप जरूर सुनी हो तो दिस पार्टनरशिप दैट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड द एसोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन दैट इज मोर देन द पार्टनरशिप तो दिस ए ओ पी हाउ दो आर टू बी टैक्सड एज एन एंटिटी आर एज इंडिविजुअल वॉट विल बी द इंसिडेंस वेदर सैलरी कैन बी पेड टू एन a member of association of person are not all these concepts will be dealt in with detail then comes the taxation of companies you all know that companies are the entities with perpetual existence companies ki definition kya hai companies wohi hain jo ki charter hui hain under companies ordinance 1984 ya uske ilawa bhi koi companies hain जैसे कि मैं आपको बार बार बताता आ रहा हूं टैक्स लॉज में कंपनीज का स्कोप बहुत वसी वो कहते हैं कंपनीज इनकॉर्पोरेटेड एंड कंपनीज ऑर्डिनेंस 1984 वो भी कंपनीज हैं बैंकिंग कंपनीज ऑर्डिनेंस के तहत अगर कोई कंपनी चार्टर हुई है इनकॉर्पोरेट हुई है वो भी कंपनी है अगर कोई ट्रस्ट है वो भी कंपनी है अगर कोई कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी है वो भी कंपनी है इफ द प्रोविंशियल गवर्नमेंट इज एंगेज इन सम बिजनेस दैट इज ए कंपनी so we will study in section 80 what a person is and what is the scope of the person and the company that is a very wide scope to so, wahan par hum dekhenge ki uska scope kya hai and who are the ones who are to be treated rather taxed as companies ab hum move karte hain towards the presumptive income presumptive tax there are two types of the regimes ye koi hukumte nahi hai ये कोई सल्तनत नहीं है ये मेथड्स हैं इनको भी हम रिजीम्स कहते हैं तो टैक्सेशन में इनकम डिटरमिनेशन के इनकम को मालूम करने के इनकम को डिराइव करने के इनकम को कंप्यूट करने के देर आर टू मेथड्स वन इज द नॉर्मल टैक्स रिजीम एंड अदर इज द प्रिजम्पटिव टैक्स रिजीम नॉर्मल टैक्स रिजीम यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट इज वेरी नॉर्मल वे as the word suggests that whatever you are earning that is tax whereas under ptr it is not the income which should be taxed in the ordinary sense of the word isko main aise explain kar dunga aapko ki abhi aapne business ki baat ki you are having so many income so many receipts but all receipts are not taxed you are allowed some expenses which you are incurring in running that business wo expenses wahan se subtract ho jate hain 
आपको कोई अलाउंसेस वहां अवेलेबल थे वो सब हो जाते हैं तो उसके बाद जो टैक्सेबल इनकम का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है दैट इज टैक्स इट इज नॉट द ग्रॉस रिसीट विच आर टू बी टैक्स इट इज द टैक्सेबल इनकम विच इज अराइव दैट दैट इज टू बी टैक्स दैट इज द नॉर्मल वे एंड दैट मैथड इज कॉल्ड नॉर्मल टैक्स रीचिंग अंडर प्रिजम्पटिव इनकम और सो टू से अंडर प्रिजम्पटिव टैक्स रिजीम वट हैपन्स योर ग्रॉस रिसीट आर बींग टैक्स Why it is necessary? Why it should be done? There may be a lot of rationale and the wisdom behind it. At this point in time, I can only tell you, it is convenient and beneficial to both the parties. Both parties, I mean, to the taxpayers as well as tax collectors. एक example से मैं आपको ये वादे कर दूँ. Say there is a non-resident shipping company. वो पाकिस्तान सोर्स से उन्हें कोई income हुई. दे हैव टू पे द टैक्स तो ए सिस्टम हैज बिन डिवाइस दैट वॉट एवर इज रिसीव दैट इज देर ग्रॉस रिसीव ग्रॉस रिसीट विल बी टैक्स नाउ अंडर नॉर्मल टैक्स रिजीम दे विल हैव टू कंप्यूट देर इनकम दे विल हैव टू कंप्यूट देर इनकम एंड देन दे विल हैव टू work out the tax on it filing returns having the assistance of the professionals as you are going to be in future and they will file their return they will have to pay to establish their offices in pakistan so you can understand under certain situations it is easy it is not only for the non resident it is easy for the taxpayers to pay on the gross receipts than in a normal way that is on taxable income so this is the way how presumptive taxes are to be worked out presumptive incomes are to be worked out then we shall move on to the tax returns now what you have earned that must be returned to the income tax department you have to file the returns to the income tax department and those returns are scrutinized that is called assessment so first the income then the filing of the returns and then assessment and a new scheme has been introduced that is self assessment scheme so students you will be seeing on the slide that we have studied rather we have chalked out our syllabus or we have managed our course in a way that incomes have been worked out that how the returns are to be filed and how assessments is to be made then there are different concepts those will be studied in module 16 and in module 17 again you see in all this activity you are having income you are filing returns there is the assessment you may have some grievances aap khush nahi hai us tax se khush ka matlab ye nahi ki nobody is happy with the taxes ki wo jo tax lagaya gaya hai that is according to you is not according to law there is a system that i was telling you the law is just there is an appellate system you can file appeals you can file references and other institution has been established and that is the institution of the federal tax ombudsman now this is all about income tax as i had told you we shall also cover the sales tax different definitions are also given in the sales tax act 1990 what is the scope of the sales tax how the payment is to be made how the people are to be registered and the sales tax act all that will be studied in the sales tax appeals system is there income tax appellate tribunal are in income tax similarly sales tax and customs tribunals are established where you can go in appeals for the redressal of your grievances then there is the system of the bookkeeping and record what records are to be maintained how the returns are to be filed what invoices are to be prepared इन सेल्स टैक्स लेट में टेल यू यहां पर रेकॉर्ड कीपिंग बड़े डिटेल्ड उसमें होती है आपकी रिसीट एंड इन वॉयस ऑल दैट इज टू बी मेंटेन वेरी प्रॉपरली बिकॉज दो आर चेक्ड उस पर आप सेल्स टैक्स भी दे रहे होते हैं कहीं पर आप इनपुट टैक्स पे कर रहे हैं कहीं पर आउटपुट टैक्स रिकवर कर रहे हैं कहीं पर आपने रिफंड क्लेम करने हैं कहीं ऑटोमेटिक एडजस्टमेंट का निजाम है तो ये तमाम चीजें जो हैं ये साथ साथ चलती रहें
उसके बाद कैपिटल वैल्यू टैक्स माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स दैट वी विल स्टडी और यहाँ मैं ये आपको बताता चलूंगी टेक्स्ट बुक्स जो आप देख रहे हैं स्क्रीन पर आपको दो टेक्स्ट बुक्स जो है रिकमेंड की हैं इनमें तमाम टैक्स लॉज प्रोसीजर प्रॉब्लम एग्जाम्पल एवरी थिंग इज देयर वी शेल फॉलो दिस टेक्स्ट बुक उसके बाद असेसमेंट प्रोसीजर जो है वो मैं आपको एक्सप्लेन कर दूँ आपकी जो असेसमेंट्स होंगी उसमें 15% परसेंट वेटेज विल बी फॉर असाइनमेंट्स एंड क्विजेस ग्रेडेड एम डी बी दैट वुड कैरी फाइव परसेंट मिड टर्म एग्जामिनेशन थर्टी परसेंट एंड टर्म एग्जामिनेशन विल बी ऑफ फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड टोटल हंड्रेड परसेंट वेटेज यू कैन सी दैट कम्स आउट ऑल दिस असेसमेंट सो आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू द एंटायर सिलेबस विच वी हैव टू कवर आप लोगों को इसमें घबराने की कोई बात नहीं ये बड़े डिटेल में हम इसको स्टडी करेंगे और आप लोग देखेंगे कि इट वुड बिकम वेरी इजी फॉर यू या एवरी एफर्ट वुड बी मेड टू मेक यू कंफर्टेबल यू विल बी कंफर्टेबल आई विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट एंड इनशाला दिस स्टडीज दे विल ओपन न्यू डोर्स इन योर कैरियर